So here I'm using this database, this data set, which I'll be using in some of the later videos as well. You will see. Uh, let me give you a first introduction to this data set because I uh, will be using it for quite some time. So first we have the, we have actually data of 200 students uh, on their gender, on their race, on their ACS, school type, program type, and then we have their reading score, writing score, math score, science score, social science score. So we can see that gender is coded as male and female, 0 and 1. We can see that race is coded as 1 Hispanic, 2 Asian, 3 African American and for white. We have SES coded as low, middle, and high. Then we have school type, which is public and private. One is public, two is private. And then we have program type. One is general, two is academic, and three is vocational. So these variables, most of these are nominal, but we have only one ordinal because here we have an order. Okay, one is low, two is middle, and three is high. And these variables here, the, the exam score in these five subjects, these are the scale variables, okay? And ID just refers to a student. We have 200 students, 200 IDs. And this is how the data looks like. But here, the, the goal of this video is to show you the most common graphs that we can do using SPSS, okay? And I will go through only the most common ones and in later videos I will go deep into each of the types but for now in this video only the most common common ones one by one so we can do charts in two ways we can go to chart builder and we can go to legacy so for now I'm using this one legacy dialogs so one of the common one is bar chart so if I click here I will have this option here so for now I will go with the simple bar chart a detail about the other ones I will present in later videos and we'll go for summaries of groups of cases if you remember from our measurement scale video that bar charts are mostly used for nominal and ordinal variables so if I click define the bar normally I would like to represent a ordinal or nominal variable so let's say if I pick race and it will be in my category axis and I'll click OK so this is what I will get okay so majority of my 200 students are white and we, I have some which may be like about 22 or something like that are African American about 11 or something Asian American Asian American and then we have Hispanic about again 25 or something like that because this is 50 and this is 0 this is more or less in the halfway so it could be close to 50 okay so normally we present categorical or ordinal variables in bar chairs another common one is the pie chart which is again used for mostly categorical that is nominal or ordinal data so if I click here again I will go for summaries of groups of cases I will show in some later videos what are the use of the other two options but for now I'll go with summaries of groups of cases again we will present uh, categorical or ordinal variable so let's say I pick this one now program type okay and I will put it here define slices by and okay so from here what I can see is I can see that most of our students are from the academic program and then not much of difference for in general and vocational programs okay they are more or less uh, similar or equal numbers so if I go to graphs again and then I go to legacy dialects one of the most popular one again is the scatter plot Again, I will go through all of them later, but now let's go with simple scatter and I click define. So if you remember again from the measurement scale video that we go for a scatter plot for interval or ratio variables. Okay, so which are here? These are our scale variables. Okay, we in SPSS, we combine interval and ratio to scale. Okay, so now let's say I want to present reading in the y-axis and writing in the x-axis okay so I can kind of see a pattern of data after plotting reading and writing a score for each of the students and if I click OK I get something like this so here actually I can see a pattern that with the increase in reading a score the it, with the increase in writing a score reading a scores also increase for the same as students so students who do better in writing they somehow do better in reading as well 
but to have a clear cut pattern here we can actually double click and we can click here and we can draw a linear line okay we can fit a linear line I close it and I close it again so actually you see that we can actually fit a linear line here okay and here we have a constant of 18.16 which means that regardless of writing a score students will score 18.16 in reading, in reading exam and then for one unit increase in writing a score reading a score increases by 0 0.65 okay this is not a perfect data for regression because we will have multicollinearity problem maybe because yeah these two are not really independent dependent variables but we can just see here how is the pattern okay so we can have a linear pattern here then we have one more left then we have one more left which is very popular that is histogram the others are used as well often but they're not the most popular ones but let's go to histogram and again if you remember for histogram we will use interval and ratio level data so let's say if I again pick writing a score here and if you want you can actually display the normal curve as, normal curve as well on your histogram normal distribution curve so I'll just pick it to see and if we click OK so this is our data distribution and this is the normal curve actually the data does not really fit well with with normal distribution and this is a rather skewed data negatively skewed data okay but we can see that majority of the students scored somewhere here between maybe uh, 58 and 60 something like that and the second highest range is here like 60 maybe 60 62 to 64 something like that here we have again some high range of the students okay so this is something we can see from from the uh, histograms one more plot let's go through this here we have is the box plot okay so that's also often used if I click here if I go for simple and I click define so I can put the boxes that I want and also for box plot actually we will be using uh, interval or ratio that is a scale variables so if I just put it here and then for box we can also have different categories okay so let's say I want to have a box for male and female so I will, I will just put the gender in category axis and then we will have I will click OK and then I will see reading and writing reading a score for male and female and in the box if you remember that this is the quarter one and this is the median the bar is the median and then we have the quarter three so from here we can quickly looking at this we can see that okay people are scoring the males are scoring higher in reading a score overall okay so but actually if there is significant difference or not to test that we have to do some hypothesis, hypothesis testing but from box plot we can get an idea but if we want to plot like all the reading and writing and social score all of them and we if we want to see like where students are scoring high in which exam we can also do that from box plot if we go here in box plot here we just have to go for this summaries of separate variables click define and then we can actually put all these variables I click the first one press shift and the last one I put it here and I will click OK so then I get a box plot like this so from here I can see that students are doing maybe scoring highest on the writing score if we if I focus on the median and after that maybe here on the science score and others yeah then maybe this one math score then social studies and then reading score so from the median that's what we can kind of see okay but if there is a real difference or not we will maybe do some hypothesis testing and just to show you how to make charts with chart builder I'll just quickly show you how it works if I click here I will have this option so here are all the charts that you want to do okay so let's say I pick one of them uh, let's say I pick histogram okay and I click it I drag it here so what do I want to present in my histogram if you remember again we normally present continuous variable in our histogram so I will just move my reading score here on the x-axis okay and then we will have a plot like this and if I click OK 
you will see that I have a histogram of reading score. Okay. Similarly, we can do any plot that we want to do from using this chart builder option. Okay, let's say if I want to make a line, if I just drag it here, and then I put reading a score, and I click OK, and then I get a line chart of reading a score. Okay, so that's it for now. But I will show in detail each of the videos, uh, each of the graph types. I will make a video, dedicated video on each of them, and uh, that will come in later, uh, later in in our SPSS playlist. Okay, so thank you for watching this video. If you like it, please like, comment, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel.